Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Town of Poughkeepsie Natural Resources Inventory and Open Space Plan Virtual Public Workshop. Uh, this is our first public workshop, and I'd like to welcome you. I am Jackie Hakes with MJ Engineering. Uh, before we go too much further, I'd like to turn it over to Supervisor Bailey to Paisley, pardon me, to do a welcome this evening. Thank you, Jackie. I'd like to welcome everybody tonight for taking part in the Natural Resource Inventory and Open Space plan forum tonight. Um, this was headed up by our CAC, which is chaired by Pam Kingsley. And a good portion of this was paid for through New York State Department of Environmental Conservation. So I want to thank them for helping us with the grant and helping us be able to hire Jackie and her team to do this. This is the map that really guides the town to where we're going and where we should be. There are areas to work with and areas to stay away from. And I want to thank everyone for updating this and going through all the maps and getting this pan back, plan back in place. So welcome, everybody. Enjoy this. Hopefully there's a lot of knowledge here. This time I'd like to turn it over to Pam Kingsley, who was the chair of our CAC. And thank you, Pam, for your team for putting all this together and working with MJ on this program. Well, thank you so much, Jay. Really appreciate you being here and really appreciate you kicking this off for us. We're very excited about it. Um, we're very excited about this entire process. This CAC just recently reconstituted about three years ago. And so this is one of our first really major projects. Um, we're really pleased with the uh, interactions and the partnership with the town um, and also with MJ Engineering, who are consultants. This is very exciting. And uh, um, I think uh, you'll enjoy uh, the presentation today. Um, and before I hand it off, I just want to, we have a, 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 pan, uh, uh, a panel of panelists here who I just want to uh, introduce um, from the CAC. This, this, these are basically, um, the panelists are mostly from the Open Space Steering Committee, um, who is, uh, the, the steering committee is uh, involved in the, uh, um, in, in this process with the NRI and the open space um, plan. So we have with us tonight is uh, Susan Carnes Hacked, who is a member of the CAC as well as the chair of the Climate Smart Task Force. We have Carolyn Fent Caroline Fenner, also a member of the CAC. Um, we have Bob Nasser, who is a member of the planning board. We have Michael Welty, who is director of municipal development of the town of Poughkeepsie and Kristen Taylor, who is town planner. Um, and also joining us is, uh, is uh, Nate Nardi Cyrus, who is from the uh, Hudson River Estuary Program and uh, also represented the DEC, who also they were um, part of the sources of our funding for this. So thank you very much. And with that, let me hand it over to MJ. Great. Thank you, Pam. Thank you, Supervisor. We appreciate that. Um, we are excited to be here working with the town and the steering committee on this effort. And I just wanted to introduce our team that is with you this evening. I am the project manager for this effort from MJ Engineering. Sarah Stark is the lead planner as well as our GIS analyst. And she's going to be walking through a lot of the mapping components of the presentation tonight. And then also joining us and serving as our webinar host is Andrew Gilchrist, a planner here at MJ. And I do want to point out that we do have another team member, Shoemaker Engineering, who is also providing assistance through this, but they are not with us this evening. Um, in terms of what to expect this evening, uh, we're going to walk through a very brief webinar how-to, so you know what to expect throughout the duration of this and how to participate. Um, we will also then provide a project overview Although the supervisor uh, did a great job of that, I'm gonna go into a little more detail about the project to help, uh, help you understand why we're doing this. Um, and then we'll get right into the bulk of our presentation this evening, which is the natural resources draft mapping. So we're gonna be sharing a lot with you this evening about what exists within your community. Um, we'll have some next steps uh, so you can know what to expect following this evening. And then we'll go into Q&A and you will have an opportunity to share your thoughts, comments, um, and ask any questions. With regard to the webinar how-to, um, we will be uh, uh, presenting a series of mapping information to you. 
And we will have throughout the duration of that presentation, a variety of participant polls. We really want you to participate. We encourage you to do that. Uh, we want to we want to hear from you and we want to try to have this be as interactive as it can be uh, throughout even you know before we get to the Q and A session. When we do finish the presentation, we will break into that question and answer session. Um, there are two ways that you can ask a question or provide a comment uh, live this evening. You can utilize the Q and A function in your uh, Zoom webinar. Um, and type in a comment and we will we will address that during the Q&A. Um, you can also raise your hand and uh, we will call upon you in the order within it which you raise your hand. And if you do happen to be on a telephone only, um, you can still participate. You hit star nine to raise your hand and then star six to mute and unmute. And I'll walk through this again when we get to the Q&A. We also, following this webinar, would encourage you to continue sharing your input and comments throughout the duration of this process. We have developed a project website and it's townofpoughkeepsieopenspace.com. And we encourage you, there's a comment form there. You can share your comments with us. That's also a really great source of information. A recording of this evening's presentation, as well as the PowerPoint presentation, will also be posted on that website uh, tomorrow morning. Um, so let's hear from you. We want to get to know a little bit about who's with us. And since we aren't able to be in person together yet, perhaps at some point uh, during this process, we want to hear a little bit about you. And we're really curious about who's joining us this evening. So this is your first chance to, uh, to get engaged and we hope you will. Andrew, if you could please pull up our first poll. We'd like to ask you who is joining us this evening and I would encourage you to select all that apply. Um, are you a resident? Do you own property in town? Are you a business owner? Are you a student? Are you a visitor? Do you work in town? Or is there something else that you would identify yourself as? Um, and we'd like to ask you to select all that apply. And we'll give you just a just a few moments to be able to identify identify who you are. All right, uh, we'll give you just another second, and then I will ask Andrew to please share the results. All right, so it looks like eighty three percent of you are town residents, fifty seven percent own property in town, nine percent are business owners. We don't have any students with us this evening, but 9% are visitors, 35% uh, also identified as working in town, and 9% identified as other. All right, let's, let's go on to another poll. We're curious, and Andrew, if you can post this next poll, we're curious about how you found out about this event in this workshop. Um, this is helpful for for um, our, our team and the town and the committee moving forward to be able to help get the word out about this effort so that we can get as much community input as possible. So um, did you hear about this through the town website, through the town email notification, through social media? Did you see a flyer somewhere? Um, are you aware of the project website? I'm curious about this uh, as we are just kicking this off or was it word of mouth? or any other uh, you know, uh, opportunity that you might have heard about this event. Uh, we, we're really curious about this. So if you could please uh, let us know how you heard about it and we'll give you another, another uh, couple of seconds to be able to identify how you heard about the uh, event. All right, Andrew, if you wanna go ahead and show, thank you. All right, so uh, just over a quarter found out through the town website. Um, large majority found out through the town email notification. So thank you to the town for doing that. Um, that clearly uh, had a great result. 4% through social media, 4% um, through the project website, 22% uh, word of mouth and 26% other. I'm curious what that other is. Maybe we can try to dive into that. Um, all right, and we've got one more poll to get to know you a little bit more. And then uh, we're gonna jump right into the presentation. So. We'd like to understand how familiar you may be with a natural resources inventory or an open space plan. Um, and it's okay if you're not, that's what we're here for today to try and uh, you know, help you understand that a little bit. And if you are, that's great too. Um, are you very familiar? 
somewhat familiar or not at all familiar. All right, we'll give you another second and then I'll ask Andrew if he can uh, show the results here. Okay, all right, so it's a it's a pretty uh, pretty even mix here. So a uh, 19% are very familiar. And then we have 38% that are somewhat familiar and 43% not at all familiar. So that's great. Thank you for joining us. I hope when you walk away today, you can at least say somewhat familiar uh, with natural resources inventory and open space plan. So now that we've got, uh, we have a, a chance to get to know you just a little bit, what I'd like to do is to walk through the project uh, share a little bit about what this project is and why it's important and, and what we're going to be doing through this effort. Um, and so the, through the town's comprehensive plan process, um, natural resources protection and open space conservation has been identified as, uh, as, as a priority within the community. And so the natural resources inventory and the open space plan are intended to be able to help the community understand what natural resources do you have in the town and what are the priorities in terms of conservation goals and strategies and what tools and techniques could be, uh, could be supported by the community to be able to conserve and protect those resources that you've identified as priorities. And as the supervisor and Pam both indicated through the DEC Hudson River Estuary Program, um, this project is being funded. So we are developing a natural resources inventory as well as an open space plan through this effort. It's being, uh, you know, was initiated through the town board. And again, through community input in your comp plan process, the community has identified priorities. It's being uh, guided by your CAC and your, your Open Space Steering Committee, and then facilitated by our team here at MJ Engineering and Shoemaker Engineering. Um, there are four key tasks that we are engaging in to be able to um, pull together this NRI and Open Space Plan. And I'm gonna walk through each of those very briefly so you understand what we are doing through this effort. So the first task is project coordination. So that's the work that, that we are doing with your committee, with your open space committee and your CAC. And there are committee meetings at key milestones to review information, provide, you know, get direction. Um, and that is really critical to this process. In addition, our, our consultant team is meeting on, um, on a monthly basis with, with Pam as the chair of the committee and with the town staff to be able to help guide this process as well. The natural resources inventory is the next task. So this provides an understanding of the existing conditions of your natural and environmental resources within the town. So this is an important starting point. You need to understand what you have and understand the significance of what you have from a natural resource perspective to help determine what your priorities might be and what might be the most appropriate approach to protecting those resources. Now, this is just a list of some of those, uh, some of the, the information that we will be gathering and Sarah will walk through this in much more detail in just a few more minutes. Um, but th this is the natural resources inventory. And so it is a series of maps and it will also be text and language to describe all of this supporting that, uh, that series of maps. We then have the open space plan. So this really establishes the vision, the townwide vision for open space. Um, this is where those priorities are set. Uh, this is where uh, as a community, you identify the tools and techniques to be able to implement your conservation vision. So that's what the open space plan step is with regard to this. It defines goals and strategies also to achieve that vision. And then the last task is really a task that is ongoing throughout the duration of this entire effort, and that's public engagement. Um, what you can see on your screen here is a series of uh, various different activities intended to take place across multiple platforms to be as inclusive as possible to try and engage as many community members as possible throughout this effort. 
And now a little more specifically, uh, as we move into the open space plan task, there will be an online survey, uh, key stakeholder meetings. Uh, we are holding a series of three public workshops. This is the first workshop. Um, we are uh, obviously holding this virtually at this point, depending on timing, we may be able to have some uh, in person, but that uh, remains to be seen at this point in time. And this first workshop is intended to be focused primarily on the NRI. What are your natural resources within the town and what is that, what do they mean? What's the importance of those? So we're going to talk through that tonight. Uh, the second workshop is really where we start that visioning process for your open space plan. You know, what are those townwide priorities for open space and natural resource conservation and protection? And then the third public workshop will be to present that open space plan and present those priorities and get feedback from the community. As I mentioned before, we do have a project website and we encourage you to go there. Uh, this is where we, we will be posting information. And in fact, the draft mapping that Sarah will be sharing with you in a moment will be posted tomorrow to that website. And we welcome your comments and thoughts about that. Um, and again, it's town, <clears throat> pardon me, town of Poughkeepsie open space.com. That is the website. Um, and then also we wanted to highlight that the, commu the committee will be serving as ambassadors throughout this project, not only to let the community know and their neighbors know uh, this is going on, but eventually uh, we hope at some point to be able to have some pop-up tables to provide information to people and to gather input. Now, this is where we are in terms of, of the project schedule. I do want to point out that this schedule um, is subject to change, right? But here, here we are in March, and we are in the midst of the NRI, the Natural Resources Inventory Task. Um, you can see the project coordination occurs throughout the duration of the effort, as does the public engagement. And so we really are looking um, in this, uh, I would say, uh, late spring, you know, May and perhaps into June to initiate the next round of public engagement really focused on that open space plan task. And so that's an overview of the project. Now let's get into the, the heart of what the purpose of this evening is. And that's really to share with you your natural resources um, existing conditions, basically. And this is draft mapping uh, that, again, will be integrated into the natural resources inventory. Um, and so this identifies important resources um, and features within your community across the board. And they might be uh, what we're talking about in terms of those environmental resources might be a little broader than what you are thinking. And, and Sarah's going to share that with you in a moment. Uh, and it really becomes a critical resource for future, uh, future planning efforts moving forward and will help to inform that open space plan. And so at this point, I am going to turn it over to Sarah who will walk us through that draft mapping and share with you what resources you have within your, your town. Excellent, Sarah. Well, thank you, Jackie. So as she said, the, the primary intent of the NRI mapping is to show the existing conditions and resources within the town. Working with the town and the DEC, 22 maps were identified for analysis. These maps portray over 80 data sets from a variety of public sources, including Dutchess County, the DEC, Hudsonia, the town of Poughkeepsie, of course, and, and more. Oh, oops, sorry about that. All right, so here is that full list of NRI mapping that we'll be walking through with you today. Since there are so many, we will be hitting on some of the highlights of each of the maps. At the end of this workshop, you, there will be an opportunity for you to ask specific questions uh, that you may have. Now, it's important to note that this is draft mapping. It will continue to be refined throughout the process with coordination from the town, your steering committee, the DEC, as well as through public feedback. Okay, so the first map in our series is the base map. So this is intended to help orient viewers. The town is bordered by the Hudson River to the west, uh, the city of Poughkeepsie here, as well as several municipalities. The major transportation corridors within the town are Route 9, which runs north and south here, 
as well as routes 44 and route 55. And then for reference, we've shown a town hall here uh, with the star. So here's an aerial view of the town. This is just another way to help orient viewers. This satellite imagery is from 2019, so it's, it's fairly recent. Um, also, we've li listed here uh, the many hamlets located within the town, including Arlington, Crown Heights, Red Oaks Mill, McDonald Heights, and others. And here you can see a few of the, uh, the key features that jump out at you when you're looking at the aerial view, including the quarry here, as well as the Galleria. Okay, next is your elevation and steep slopes map. So here we've shown lower elevations in green. So those lower elevation areas are areas just along the Hudson River here, as well as uh, along the mouth of Casper Creek. Higher elevations on this map are shown in the browns and purples. Of course, the highest eleva elevation uh, within the town is Peach Hill at an elevation of uh, 485 feet. So here's a closer view in the northeastern part of town. So here we've also shown the steep slopes. Now steep slopes are um, defined by Dutchess County as areas where land grades are greater than 15%. And one of the reasons we look at this is because at, at times they can be a constraint to further development. Now for the remainder of the maps, we have broken them up into sections grouping some of those similar resources together. So some of the map groupings that we'll be talking through with you today include land resources, water resources, resilience, as well as land use. So the first group that we'll be reviewing today are your land resources. This includes your soils, agricultural resources, large forests, habitat, important biodiversity areas, bedrock geology, as well as surficial geology. Now here's a map of the soils within Poughkeepsie. One property that we typically examine is the drainage ability of the soil, shown here as the drainage classification. Well-drained soils are shown in the red and orange colors. You can see from this map that that, encompass, that is the most dominant um, soil quality within the town. So the majority of your soils are very well drained. Poorly drained soils are shown in this blue color. So you can see that these are localized um, throughout the town. Now these can indicate the presence of possible wetlands. So we'll be reviewing that on another map in the series. Closely related to soils are your agricultural resources within the town. Here we've mapped the prime farmland soils. So these soils are shown in orange throughout the town. So a prime farmland is land that is deemed best suited for agriculture based on its unique soil properties. Also shown here are farmland soils of statewide importance. So these areas, they aren't prime farmland. However, if they are managed properly, they can still be very productive. So this is a closer view in the northeastern area of town, which is predominantly where the majority of the agriculture is happening. The agricultural districts shown with this red hatch are designated by the county and uh, to encourage and protect the existing farmland. Also mapped are your agricultural exemption areas shown in this yellow hatch, and they do overlap uh, in some areas with the county agricultural districts. So an agricultural exemption allows qualifying farmland to reduce their profit, property taxes. It's, it's uh, essentially an incentive. All right, moving on. Um, and an, another important land resource, of course, are your forests. Here we've mapped the various forest types throughout the town. The most significant forest type within Poughkeepsie are your stepping stone forests. Now, these are contiguous patches of between 200 and 2,000 acres. These are important because they serve as a wildlife corridor for mi migration between the different patches. Also mapped here in yellow are your floodplain forests. Now, these are forested areas that are seasonally flooded. 
And these are important because they are home to plants and animals that are specialized to only live within these specific habitats. Also mapped here are the, the limestone woodland and forest community. So this is the little, the brown color. It's located just up here, just south of the city of Poughkeepsie. Okay, moving on to your ecologically significant habitats. So these were mapped by Hudsonia, and Hudsonia is a nonprofit research institute, which you may be familiar with. So this shows the diversity of habitat types within the town. So the white areas here are developed. Um, the pink areas are identified by Hudsonia as uh, cultural areas. So they define this as areas that are significantly altered, um, but are unpaved. So this could be things like your golf courses or perhaps an open field. Gray areas shown here are, um, are your waste sites. So these are areas where there is no vegetation present. From this map, you can see that the larger natural habitats include your upland hard hardwood forests here in this medium green. So you can see that they're located all throughout the town. There's larger patches in the, oops, in the northern region of town, as well as some located along the Hudson River, as well as near um, New Hamburg. Also, your upland meadows account for um, quite a bit of acreage within the town. So these are highlighted in this lighter, lighter green here. So about 700 acres are, are your upland meadows. Now, there is a lot on this map. So here is a closer view. And this is in the um, this is in the northwestern area of town, of course. So we've also mapped here your wetland habitat. So they're shown in this, uh, this yellow green color. Now it's important to note that these are further categorized on a separate map um, called, of course, the wetlands habitat map. Uh, for brevity, we have not included it here, but it will be available on the project website tomorrow for you to browse through. And next up is your important biodiversity areas. Um, one of the areas, of course, are your significant biodiversity areas. These are shown in the pink hatching. So you can see this along, um, primarily along the Hudson River. This is, of course, the largest, and it, um, Oh, yes. So for the Hudson River, it contains uh, tidal and freshwater wetlands. Also mapped here are your important areas. So these are identified through the New York Natural Heritage Program. And they, um, they are identified as important because they support rare and specific species. The largest important area within the town, of course, is the fat foraging area. So you'll notice that in the light yellow color that encompasses almost 50% of the town. Moving on to your bedrock geology. So this is, of course, the underlying geology within Poughkeepsie. We look at geology because it can influence things like soil and water chemistry, as well as topography. The larger geology types within Poughkeepsie um, are highlighted here, and they include different types of limestone and shale. OK, uh, the next map is your surficial geology. So surficial geology describes the material that sits on top of the bedrock. This is typically looser materials such as silt, sand, and, uh, and deposits, glacial deposits. In Poughkeepsie, the surficial geology is primarily sand and gravel, as well as till. Now, the sand and gravel layer outlined here is important because it has a relationship to groundwater due to its permeability. We will see this in the drinking water section of the, um, the water resources group, which we will get to next. So don't forget. So I'll hand it over to Jackie that I'll take you through a participant poll. Sure. So we're going to pause here for a moment. I know that's a lot of information <laughs> and there's more to come, uh, but we thought we'd give you a little bit of a break and uh, we'd like to hear from you at this point in time. And so this is a different type of participant poll that we'd like to hear from you. So uh, we're utilizing a, a Poll Everywhere app. So if you could take out your phone um, and text MJ Planning 518 to 37607, or you can take a picture of that QR code on your screen. That'll work just as well. 
Um, you can also go to pollev.com slash mjplanning518. And what that'll do, that'll take you to an app and we have a, a question that will follow this, but I'm gonna give everybody a moment to again, either text MJ planning 518 to 37607, take a photo of that QR code or go to pollev.com slash MJ planning 518. All right. And uh, so now let's go ahead and move on. Um, so there we go. We'd like to ask, what are the most important land resources to you? Um, and so right now uh, we have uh, at 50% the forest. Oh, here we go. We're, uh, the biodiversity is, is coming up too. Um, so you can select from forest, wild ha wildlife habitats, soils, or biodiversity for this. All right, we'll give folks just another uh, couple of seconds to weigh in. It looks like people are still voting, so we'll give we'll continue to give people a little bit of time here. Wow. All right, we've got some voting still coming in. All right, so here we are. Looks like forty percent of uh, of you participating feel that biodiversity is the most important land resource, followed by wildlife habitats, and then forests at a, at, that are tied together. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, everybody. We appreciate you participating. We have, a, we have a handful more of these scattered throughout, so pay attention. <laughs> With this, I'm going to turn it over to Sarah to uh, shift us from land to water. So Sarah, take it away. Thank you. All right. So of course, the next group we'll be reviewing today are your water resources. This includes your drinking water resources, your watersheds, stream habitats, wetlands, as well as flood hazard areas. Okay, so here we begin with the drinking water resources. If you recall in the previous section, we had outlined the sand and gravel layer on the surficial geology map. You can see how this correlates with some of the unconsolidated aquifers within the town. And these unconsolidated aquifers are shown in blue, and these are typically your sand and gravel deposits. So these aquifers are one of the important sources of drinking water within Poughkeepsie. Now, of course, another important resource um, is the Hudson River. So that is the source of the municipal water for Poughkeepsie. The intake location is shown here in green, and we've also mapped the other wells throughout the town. We'll be examining each of these resources further within the narrative, uh, within the context of water quality. So next up is your watersheds map. Watersheds are defined as large areas from which water drains into a water body. The boundaries are often defined by topography. Knowing the extents of the watersheds and the resultant water body that they drain into can really help us understand the downstream impacts of land use within that area. The primary watersheds of the Poughkeepsie drain either into the Hudson River, shown with the, the blue and purple watersheds here, or into Wappinger Creek, in, which is shown in the, uh, the teal watershed. So as you may know, Wappinger Creek uh, forms the eastern boundary of town. And next up are the stream habitats within Poughkeepsie. Um, the primary rivers and streams include the Hudson River, of course, it's the, the most prominent, as well as Fallkill Creek up in the northern area of town. Um, Casper Creek, which runs uh, through, you can see it runs through uh, Town Hall all the way down to the Hudson River. And then of course, Wappinger Creek, which we just talked about. It's important to note as well that Wappinger Creek is an important trout stream. So this is shown in, in orange highlight here. Okay, and now it's a, it's a lot of information on one map. So here's a closer view of that. Um, we've also shown the perennial and intermittent streams throughout the town. Now, perennial streams are, are streams that are present year round. These are shown in the solid blue line, whereas intermittent streams shown in that dashed blue line are only present seasonally. So maybe during the spring melt. You can see some of the intermittent streams that feed into Casper Creek here. 
It's important to note that streams not only support a variety of wildlife, but they also contribute to the water quality within the Hudson River. Right, the next resource we'll be talking through today are the wetlands. Um, state wetlands are shown in the purple hatch here. And these are freshwater wetlands that are regulated by the DEC. And they encompass about 500 acres within the town. Federal wetlands not only identify the freshwater wetlands within the town, so these are shown in yellow and in green here, but they also include your rivers, your water bodies, as well as marine wetlands. Now here's a closer view of that map. Also shown here are the probable and possible wetlands. So these are areas where the soils are poorly or very poorly drained. If you can recall from the soils map, we looked at the drainage classification of the different soils. So those blue areas correlate well with the possible and probable wetlands on this map here. Okay, and then finally, uh, the last map in the group are your flood hazard areas. These flood hazard areas occur primarily along the Hudson uh, and as well as the creeks, Wappinger Creek, Casper Creek, as well as Fallkill Creek. 100 year flood zones are shown in the dark blue hash line and indicate areas where there is a 1% chance of flooding on average per year. 500 year flood zones are also shown here in the teal hash. And that is it for your water resources. Great. So I think you might be starting to get the, uh, the flow here. So we have another question for you. If you participated in the first poll, then um, you don't need to do anything. You're already in. But if you haven't, text MJ Planning 518 to 37607. And we would like to ask you what are the most important re water resources to you? Is it the Hudson River? Is it your streams, wetlands, lakes? Is it the drinking water? And as a reminder, if you hadn't logged in before, uh, please text MJ Planning 518 to 37607 and share your thoughts with us. And we'll give folks a few, a few more minutes and you can select all that apply here. So it looks like drinking water and the Hudson River um, so far are getting the most votes here. No streams as well, okay. All right, folks, we'll give you another few seconds here. All right, and uh, all right. It looks like uh, the drinking water is the most important resource, 28%. Hudson River and your streams tied at 22%, followed by your wetlands and your lakes. All right, and with that, we'll turn it over to Sarah to talk about resilience. Oh, thank you, and thank you for your participation in these polls. So the next group we'll be talking about today is resilience. So this includes your coastal habitats, the Hudson River shoreline, as well as sea level rise. Now, of course, many of these are also important water resources. However, we group them here because they are particularly important within the context of resilience. Now, resilience means how adaptable an area is to climate change and storm events. So the first map that we'll be reviewing today are your coastal habitats. So as you may know, the Hudson River is a significant resource for the town, and it shares nearly 10 miles of coastline. Many important habitats exist within this area. The first one we'll be talking about today are your significant natural communities. So these were identified by the New York Natural Heritage Program, and they're shown in the yellow hash. You can see that these uh, primarily encompass the Hudson River, as well as uh, further south near the mouth of Wappinger Creek. Um, for your estuary communities. Now, significant natural communities not only identify the extent of these, of these communities, but they also identify their, their occurrence. So how, how um, rare is this on a global scale? How rare is this feature on uh, a local scale? So we'll be getting into those details within the narratives of the NRI. Also shown here are the coastal fish and wildlife habitats. So these are shown in the purple hatch. And you can see the extent is a little bit different than the, uh, 
than the resource we spoke about before. It's a, a little bit more narrow along the Hudson because it's, uh, it highlights the importance of the Hudson River deep water. Okay, tidal wetland, here's a, here's a closer view of that. Um, tidal wetlands are also shown in pink. So these areas uh, cover about 35 acres within the coastline. So you can see a large, uh, a, a large amount down here. Sorry, I don't really have my slide now. Right here. Okay. Also mapped here in green are your submerged aquatic vegetation. So this includes both native and invasive species. You can see that there are large areas near the, the northern end of town, just south of Hyde Park, as well as uh, extensive areas within uh, the mouth of Wappinger Creek and a little further north, as well as along the coast of uh, New Hamburg here. Next up are your, the Hudson River shoreline. So the shoreline map is um, it's kind of an extension of the previous map. But here we're showing features with a, a finer resolution. So this includes uh, your tidal wetlands, tidal wetland pathways, as well as your Hudson River shoreline type. So of course, as you know, the Hudson River is important for communities in, in many ways in terms of climate resilience, water quality, water intake, as well as accessibility. Here, we're map, here we've mapped the tidal wetlands. So the tidal wetlands that were mapped in the previous map are also shown here in pink. Here's a, here's a closer view of that. So we've also mapped your tidal wetland pathways. And we've shown these right next to those tidal wetlands because these tidal wetland pathways are an estimate of where tidal wetlands may move by 2100. Also mapped here are the, uh, the shoreline types. So the shoreline type is categorized as either hard engineered or man-made or natural shoreline. The shoreline type within Poughkeepsie is predominantly man-made, uh, representing about 65% of the shoreline. Next is the sea level rise mapping. Um, using data from the Hudson River Flood Decision Tool by Columbia University, we've mapped the adopted high projections from the New York State DEC which we've shown here. We've aligned these projections at, uh, as closely as possible with the data from the flood decision tool. So today we'll be examining 30 inches, 60 inches, and 72 inches of sea level rise. Because it's such a large area, we, we broke up the coastline into four panels. So we'll be walking north to south with you to show the, um, the results of that data. So this is the area just north of the city of Poughkeepsie. Inundation is mapped here in dark blue. And the current 100-year flood zones are shown in yellow here for reference. There's areas of immersion um, just north of the city uh, in 2050. And that area of immersion starts to get a little bit further north and a little bit further um, into the coastline by 2100. Okay, moving on. So this is the area just south of the city. Uh, for these projections show inundation within Sunfish Cove up here, oops, sorry, right here uh, by 2050. And the inundation um, gets a little bit greater as you get into 2100, but it's still pretty localized. So areas right, right along here are seeing um, some inundation by 2100. All right, moving south. So this is the quarry area. Um, projections show inundation within the quarry uh, by 2050. Of course, again, these are these are just projections. This is just a model. Um, and by 2100, you can see that some of the inundated areas um, start to show up just a, a small localized patch uh, uh, within Casper Creek. Okay, and finally, in the, the southern area of town um, near New Hamburg, you can see that the, there's some inundation in 2050 with the, the 30 inch projection, uh, just a little bit just south of, um, you may be familiar with Bowdoin Park here for reference, and just a little bit along um, further up Wappinger Creek. And then as you get into 2080 and 2100, you can see that some of these areas expand a little bit into um, the additional low areas of the shoreline. 
Okay, and that is um, that is the last of the resilience mapping. Okay, great. So we want to ask your thoughts about resilience. So once again, if you haven't participated in the first two polls, we would invite you to participate in this one. Uh, text MJ Planning 518 to 37607. And we're curious, what resilience topics are you most interested in? Is it the wildlife habitats along the Hudson River? The potential sea level rise impacts? Or shoreline protection? And, and again, this is shoreline protection of, of the Hudson River. All right, so we'll give folks a, a little bit more time, but it looks like wildlife habitats along the Hudson and potential sea level rise impacts are, are really important. All right, we'll give folks uh, another few seconds to, uh, to share your thoughts about what you're most interested in with regard to these resilience topics. Okay. At this point, it looks by far like wildlife habitats along the Hudson is uh, most uh, uh, important to, or you are most interested in at this point, followed by potential sea level rise and uh, shoreline protection um, uh, a little bit here. Oh, here we go. So we're just about even now with, with the voting. Okay. Um, so wildlife and, and potential sea level rise impacts important to everyone. Um, so we're going to shift on now to, to the land use uh, discussion. So Sarah, why don't you share with us land use? All right, excellent. So this is the final map grouping for this evening. So we're going to be looking at uh, land use within Poughkeepsie. So the maps in this category include your zoning and tax parcels, your brownfields, waste sites, and regulated facilities, as well as your cultural and historic sites. All right, so here's the existing zoning map for Poughkeepsie. This tells us what the current regulations are on, on land use within the town. Poughkeepsie has 16 zoning districts and eight overlay districts. Of course, as you may know, the town is currently going through a comprehensive plan update, which may identify future changes to the zoning. It's important to understand what the current regulations are in case there are recommendations uh, from the future open space plan for proposed changes. All right, now here are your brownfields, waste sites, and regulated facilities. It's important to understand the location of these facilities and their relationship to water quality. We've shown your, the waste and stormwater discharge sites, also known as uh, speedies, here in the yellow dot. We'll have a close-up map of this as well. Um, we've also shown the bulk storage facilities, which includes your chemical sites, uh, major oil storage sites, and petroleum storage sites. And those are mapped uh, using the, the pink symbols here. Also shown are the remediation sites. So this includes the brownfield cleanup sites, uh, including Hudson River site, and the state Superfund sites, which we've identified a few of the larger ones here. Now, obviously, there's a lot of information on this map. So here's a detailed view uh, near Crown Heights. Industrial sites, such as the quarry, are also mapped here in gray, as well as the waste sites. All right, and the final map for this evening is the cultural and historic sites. We like to look at the cultural and historic sites because of their connection to natural heritage. Past settlement patterns can often show the link, between, uh, link to land use patterns today. There are three natural, na national register districts within the town, and that includes the Stone Street and Main Street districts, located here, as well as the Wappingtree Falls Historic District located within the village here. Also mapped are 17 different National Register sites. So we'll see these in greater detail on the next slide as well. In addition to those National Register sites are 16 local historic sites. So these are sites that aren't recognized by the, the National Register, but they are identified as important uh, by the town. So here's a detailed view. Um, we've also mapped the generalized location of past Native American sites. So these are shown in this, uh, this pink hash here. 
For, we've also identified uh, some of the current cemeteries throughout the town, and we'll be working with the town historian to map additional sites, including uh, your historic cemeteries. And that is the last map in the series this evening. So I will. All right. Thank you, Sarah, very much. A lot of data, a lot of information. We do realize um, it, we're, we're giving a lot to you in a very short period of time, but we do want to keep asking you questions. So again, uh, please text MJ Planning 518 to 37607. And we would like to know with regard to land use, um, what land use issues or concerns do you have regarding natural resources in the town? This is a little bit different. You have the opportunity to type in your comments, write in your comments here. This is an open-ended question um, that we are hoping you'll, you'll take the opportunity to share with us. So again, if you haven't participated in the previous uh, polling questions, text MJ Planning 518 to 37607. And we hope that, um, that folks will share some, some ideas with us here. Oh, we'll give folks a little bit more time. It doesn't look like we're getting any, any responses so far. Okay. Okay. So we won't take that to mean there are no issues or concerns, <laughs> just that we need to, to continue to work to identify those um, at this point in time. All right. Okay, so we might be having a, a challenge with our technology here. Um, or, uh, or folks are a little bashful about sharing their thoughts. So regardless, we're going to move on. Thank you folks for, if you did try to participate in that one, um, we would encourage you to share your thoughts and ideas about that question during the Q&A. Um, so with regard to next steps, and, and we're almost to the point where we can, we can hear from, from you a little bit more, um, but we'd like to share with you uh, what to expect next within this process so that you can follow along. So our team will continue to refine this draft NRI mapping. As Sarah said, we will refine that along the way based on input from and, and direction and guidance from the town staff, uh, DEC, the steering committee, as well as public input um, as we move through this effort. And that uh, mapping, again, will be available on the project website at townofpoughkeepsieopenspace.com. Uh, tomorrow morning. Um, and we will be working simultaneous to that to develop the NRI document. So that is the supporting text and information behind the, this mapping data um, that was presented this evening. We will then also be moving into the open space plan task. Um, and we will be continuing community engagement uh, through that task. The next time we're together, we'll be asking uh, visioning questions about open space and natural resources in your community. Um, what, where do you want to see, uh, you know, resources protected and, and what mechanisms might you be interested in uh, supporting for that? Uh, and I do want to point out that we do have our next steering committee meeting, uh, committee meeting number four, um, May 24th, 7 p.m., um, and that and information with regard to that meeting will also be on, on this web, uh, the project website, as well as the town website. Okay, so we do have one last participant poll, and I hope that this one does work. Um, so we'd like to ask you how you interact with natural resources in your town. What do you do? Do you, are, are you a fisher? Uh, fisherman, fisher person, are you uh, into boating? Do you like to hike? Do you like to bird watch? Uh, do you just like to sit um, and, and, and enjoy your views uh, within your community? We're really curious about what your thoughts are. Okay, so, so far, walk, sit, uh, you're a walker, uh, biker, picnicking, fishing. Excellent, this is great. Thank you, folks. Big golfers, okay. Um, all right, you, you like, okay. Hiking, walking, passive recreation, picnicking, fishing, a lot of hiking, walking, golf. Okay, this is great. All right, 
All right. Uh, you like to bring your children. Um, okay. So there's a variety here of interactions that are what I would term both passive, you know, the sitting, the, you know, just in, enjoying, um, and the more active, the golfing and the hiking. Um, so this is, this is really great. All right, folks, we'll give you just another few, a uh, few moments to share some of your ideas here. All right, so walking, hiking, watching wildlife, I think really are, are, are the big winners here this evening. So thank you folks. We appreciate you taking the opportunity to, to, uh, to share with us through these, um, through these polls. And now we're gonna move into the Q&A. All right, so um, just to recap, uh, you can post your question in the Q&A function of your Zoom webinar panel. You can also use the raise the hand feature um, in your Zoom webinar panel. And if you are on your telephone, you can still participate and we encourage you to. You can hit star nine and that will raise your hand. We'll see that. Um, and then uh, star six to mute and unmute. So any folks that are raising their hand to participate, Andrew is our host, we'll be letting people in. So you will have the opportunity uh, to speak and um, you will be able to, to share your thoughts and ideas. Um, and then um, Andrew will move on to the next person. All right, so again, raise the raise hand feature. Um, you can uh, type into the Q&A or by phone, star nine to raise your hand. And so at this point, I'm actually going to stop sharing our screen um, so that we have the full panel available because we do have the full panel uh, here to be able to help answer any questions that uh, that might arise. And so with that, I would ask Andrew, do we have any folks that are raising their hands or any comments in the Q&A that you'd like to, uh, to highlight? We do, we have uh, someone raising their hand, uh, Jennifer Burke Goldschmidt. So let's see. Jennifer, you can go ahead and unmute. Thank you so much for all your work on this. Can you hear me? We can. Yes, we can. Thank you. I wasn't able to come till halfway through because of another meeting, but I did consult with someone else who attended the meeting to be sure I wasn't overlapping with something you covered in depth. Um, I'm very concerned to hear about integrated green space into neighborhoods, especially thinking about green space as an accessible resource, the way we need grocery stores accessible and we need affordable housing and schools accessible to everyone. I think green space needs to be accessible. And some of you know that I'm also the coordinator, one of three coordinators of the Arlington Neighborhood Association. And we're very concerned about the nine acre green space that really is the centerpiece of our neighborhood where we come together and where we walk and where we breathe and where we see. Um, that our neighborhood isn't purely developed. So I'd like to hear this effort attend to questions of where green spaces can be carved out and preserved that are very much integrated rather than being like, oh, should we go to the river today? Should we go to the park? Um, many green spaces are right, right where we are and, and waterways as well. As you know, in the city, they've done a lot with the waterways underneath roads and attending to that. So um, I'd like to see also maybe a mechanism like landmarking, right? Um, to, to, mark, to mark green spaces for longevity and for preservation from um, development. I think we have um, 300 people in our neighborhood who've written letters um, really imploring the town to preserve this central green space in our neighborhood. So thank you again for your efforts and um, for letting me participate. Thank you very much. We appreciate your, your thoughts and your comments. And um, I should probably have mentioned that all of the thoughts and comments that are shared with us um, will, be, will be shared with all of the, the steering committee members and will be taken into consideration as we continue to move through this process. So, so that's important information for us to be aware of. Thank you very much. Okay, so we do have a question through the Q&A. Um, was the 2008 Hudsonia Biodiversity Study for the town incorporated into your findings? 
Sure. Thank you, Andrew. So I'm going to turn that question over to Sarah. She has been um, doing the deep dive in the data with regard to this, and so she'll be able to answer that question, Sarah. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so yes, we did look at some of that data. In fact, if you notice on the ecologically significant habitats map, which will be available on the web website tomorrow, we have mapped the, uh, the significant habitats that Hudsonia had, uh, had surveyed. In addition to that, we also mapped the, the wetland habitats. Great. And um, I'd like to open it up, um, perhaps Nate, our DEC partner. I don't know if you have any other comments you may want to want to add to that um, with regard to the use of the Hudsonia data. Um, no, I think that pretty much covers it. The only thing I would add is that there's also some stream mapping um, that's available that it was done through Hudsonia, in particular the intermittent streams. That's not regularly available for most communities. So, um, you know, uh, Poughkeepsie is especially lucky to be able to have that really high resolution mapping. Um, and, uh, you know, it's been incorporated on, on not just the maps uh, that, that Sarah was talking about, but, but many others as well, so. Thank you, Nate. And we have a comment from Carl Whitehead. Um, he's saying uh, invasive species in the Wappingers Creek are a concern for kayaking. Okay, great, thank you. Okay. And we have no more questions or raised hands at this time. Okay. All right. Um, well, at this time, I, I would certainly like to open it up to the panelists uh, while we perhaps wait a, a few few more minutes to see if there's other uh, comments or questions that come in from those that are joining us. Um, are there any any comments that the panelists may want to uh, want to share this evening? Um, I just want to say that I really appreciate. Uh, the presentation tonight, um, I and and everyone who has shown up um, for this presentation and and your input, uh, you know, we're learning about this as we go along, and I think this is a work in progress of understanding our surroundings and the things that we value and that we want to preserve and that we want to protect, and um, it's a community effort. So the fact that so many people showed up tonight, I think is wonderful. Um, and we'll move forward. We'll listen to all these voices and we will um, be informed by them and we will move forward. So thank you so much. And thank you, MJ. This has been wonderful. Thank you, Pam. And I think um, that I saw at one point during our, our presentation, the high number was uh, 41 total participants. Um, Andrew, can you, can you confirm that? Yep, and we're, uh, we're to 39 now, but we were, yep, at a total of 41. Okay, great. You know, I did want to mention too that, um, you know, during normal times, of course, we would have done this, uh, you know, in a, in a large room where we could all have gathered around the maps. Um, a lot of these maps, you know, given the size of the town, uh, certainly read much better in person when you get to go right, uh, right up to them and, and look at them. And um, in that kind of a setting, you know, we would have had the opportunity to actually have people at each of the maps and take your comments and your thoughts, um, you know, as you moved through the room. Um, so unfortunately, we couldn't do that today for obvious reasons, but I really hope that people will take the time to look at the maps as they get posted up on the project website uh, tomorrow uh, and going forward for the, you know, the next uh, few weeks, but, uh, and, and, and take a closer look at them, you know, when you zoom in uh, to your neighborhood to, you know, I, I think you can really, um, you can see a lot there and uh, let us know what you see, what you think might be missing, uh, things that are of particular importance to you. Um, it's a real, you know, the more we get that from people, the better the project will be. So I really encourage that. But thanks, I think it's a great presentation, a lot of material to go, to go <laughs> through, so yeah. Thank you. And just a reminder to those that are still with us, um, town of Poughkeepsie, openspace.com is the website. And there is also a comment page there. So um, I hope you take to heart my suggestion to, to uh, you know, dive into your community with regard to these maps. And, and you can share your comments right on the website. And that comes directly to our team. And we share that 
with the town and the steering committee. Um, and so we, we would certainly encourage you to do that. Okay. Andrew, I'm not seeing any additional questions or raised hands at this time. Is that correct? That's correct. Unless I'm missing something. Okay. So I would I would ask uh, Pam as our chair and, and Mike as our town staff, um, we can certainly um, wait a little while longer if you'd like, uh, or we can we can wrap up and um, encourage people to again share comments with us um, after after the meeting. Well, I think we can call this adjourned. And, uh, and again, thank you so much, you guys. Uh, I, I think this has been wonderfully interactive. Your presentation was just very graphic and, and well appreciated. And thank you so much. Well, thank you, everybody. We appreciate it. And um, we'll be seeing everybody soon and, and hoping to, uh, to fully engage the community as we continue through this. Have a good night, everybody. Take care. Thank you. Thanks. Be good.